So moving on then uh, to our speech of today uh, from Jeff on privacy and the future of virtual reality. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Johnny. And I'm very happy to be here at Toastmasters to speak to you on the topic of privacy and virtual reality. In my speech today, I'll be talking about three things. First of all, the growth of VR in the last couple of months, how it's really been a growing area of technology. Secondly, how a big use case for virtual reality is watching videos and consuming media. And thirdly, a talk about the current state of privacy and how analytics is also being used to track people in virtual reality. So first of all, about the growth of VR. I'm, I'm interested in the technology because I recognized early on that this was something quite unique. And the main thing about virtual reality that I, I found was that when you put on the headset, you are transported into the virtual world. So your environment around you, you can no longer be aware of your real life surroundings. And now you're fully in the virtual world. I first experienced this maybe about five years ago when I tried a virtual reality headset at Emily Carr University. I put on the headset and I was transported to a nightclub in China. So I was in a sunny room in Vancouver in real life, but in the virtual world, my, my body and my mind thought I was in a dark room with some music playing and people dancing and people enjoying themselves in a nightclub setting. So after this first experience, I realized that VR lets us escape our reality or go to a different reality and experience something that we actually feel like we're somewhere else. During COVID-19 in the last few months, people have realized that virtual reality lets them escape their home and go to foreign places, whether it's traveling around the world or going into virtual worlds, even if they're stuck at home in the physical world. And this is one of the main reasons why virtual reality has grown a lot in the last few months. There was a stat that came out a few weeks ago that said that in the first few weeks of the pandemic, over 1.5 million more users logged onto VR on the Steam platform. This may also have been because of the release of a game called Half-Life Alex, which is very uh, one of the polished high budget games the first ones to come out in virtual reality to provide a really amazing experience for people. But in any case, the growth of VR is unquestionable that in the last few months, it's really been growing a lot. And I think it's a good time to talk about some of the privacy implications of it as well. But before I go into that, I wanted to mention one of my personal favorite use cases for VR, which is watching videos. I am not much of a gamer, so I haven't really been playing too many of the games using my Oculus Quest, but I have been watching a few videos every night from YouTube and from movies and movies that I watched previously. One of the movies I watched was a very good show about the environment called The Nature of Things by David Suzuki. And so I was watching the first episode of this show, which was originally produced for CBC in virtual reality. And so it's not a 360 video, it's just on a, a movie screen, but I really got to feel like I was right there on the train with David Suzuki exploring Europe and exploring the um, positive energy and green energy sources that he was talking about in his episode. Another aspect of video content is in VR, you can watch videos with other people. My brother also has an Oculus Quest and we went into VR and watched Blade Runner together. But in, in VR, we were sitting around a campfire in the woods watching Blade Runner on a massive screen in front of us. It felt very futuristic and I could talk with my brother as you're watching the movie as if he was in the same room as me. Very incredible experience. And that was done through an app called Big Screen. So just considering the uses cases I've mentioned now, the virtual travel, escaping into virtual world, and then watching videos with friends, even these simple use cases, there are some privacy implications. Because there's a new field emerging called VR analytics, where companies will measure how people are using the content and actually create heat maps of where they were looking at different times throughout the content. So YouTube used to have this feature, they removed it in January of this year, maybe due to concerns over privacy, but they used to allow people who rate, who make videos to know where everyone is looking in their, in their videos, if they're wearing virtual reality. 
That's called the VR360 heat map. Quite an interesting tool to really understand how people are consuming your content. And it's almost like a heat map for a web page where you know people are clicking and looking, but it even brings it further because in virtual reality, the headset can track your exact head movements and know pretty much what you're looking at while you're watching your virtual reality video. Although virtual reality browsers do have an incognito mode or privacy mode, that only stops the history from being recorded on your phone browser. It doesn't prevent the network that you're communicating with to actually track the experience that you're having. So that's very similar to how incognito wor mode works on a desktop browser. It maybe gives people a sense of security, but really it doesn't protect you at all from anyone who's listening in on what you're doing, especially the, the person who created the content to begin with. So with this continuation of how we are being tracked online, we're also being tracked in virtual reality. It's kind of this idea of the central control, which is gathering data and providing useful analytics to businesses to better understand how people are consuming their content. This is great for things like COVID-19, where we want to track where people are going to make sure they don't spread the virus too much. But it also can be used for marketing purposes. Say the network or YouTube understands my preferences even better than I know myself. And with the uh, problems like hackers and malware and viruses, this information could get in the wrong hands, especially for people who are doing things which maybe are not so favorable for, to whatever government in the country they're in. This could be a major concern for them. But I would say that currently the benefits of VR, such as the ability to escape your small house and go traveling around the world safely without having to leave your home, these kind of benefits are definitely outweighing any perceived privacy effects that people may experience at the current time. But I think it's up to everyone to be aware that VR does have privacy implications, that what you do in VR and what you're looking at is being recorded, probably by Facebook and probably by the app developer, and they will be using this information to optimize their experience for future users. And this information may also be tied to you individually for someone to look at at some point. So I would say right now the benefits are very good for VR, but please be sure to be aware of these upcoming privacy implications as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. That was an excellent speech.